How do you think you'll feel once someone beats one of your records? I think if, if I can go to the point where I've gone over the 200 kilometers an hour and I've gone faster than anyone else has ever been on a snowboard. Yeah. I think that would be a point when if someone does come along then and break the record, then I'll have nothing but admiration for them. And if anything, yeah, they're, they're doing it because they they look at your work and they're so inspired by it that makes them want to do it too. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, or they just sense. have that bug of being just absolutely <laughs> crazy and wanting to do stupid things. Either way, you yeah, want to look true. at it, but yeah. Either way. Um, and do you think there are any records that you consider have already been taken to their limit? The downhill speed records, um, I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. Basically, they've banned all speed snowboarding on any of the fastest speed tracks just because of how dangerous it was, I mean. So tell me about The Collective. This is your website. It's effectively a content platform for snow sports. What inspired the launch of it? Everyone's been on the mountain at some point one day and been like, oh, have you seen a uh, dude that wears the red jacket just pull that sweet jump in the park? And you'll yeah. be like, oh, yeah, red jacket guy. I saw him three weeks ago, like, doing something <laughs> sweet, like, in the backcountry. Like, my motivation is to try and was to try and make it a space where when you're not on the mountain, like you still know what what red jacket guy is doing. And someone from yeah. another mountain will know what red jacket guy is doing. Your average ski and snowboarder who goes like maybe a week a year, two weeks a year, like three or four weekends a year, probably doesn't get that same hype. So I wanted to make a space that was hyping up people. Yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah. Making the sport accessible to everyone, especially coming from a place where it wasn't accessible. In terms of keeping your strength up, how much sleep were you averaging a night? So, um, so I'd probably cycle around 17 hours um, and then it would take me about two hours to get the tent. To, by the time I stopped to get the tent up, um, to melt snow and ice, to make water, to rehydrate my food to deal with all my injuries and everything. And so I probably had a two or two or three hours a night, but I don't think much of that was sleeping. A lot of it was sort of lying there going, oh my God, I'm in Antarctica in a tent yeah. on my own. <laughs> um, That's but amazing. it was fine. You know, I kind of, um, I'm quite good with sleep deprivation really. So. <laughs> and were you ever scared that you'd lose your bike in the conditions whilst you were camped out? <laughs> yeah in fact I've got a hilarious photograph of like the tent and then I've tied the polar cycle to it and when I give <laughs> talks I, I, I joke that I was where I was lying in my tent and I was really worried somebody would come and pinch the polar cycle of course there's nobody in Antarctica so. <laughs> That's so funny so between sort of exhaustion losing a lot of body liquid and weight from exercising and being exposed to such sub temperatures can you tell me about what was happening to your body were any, there any sort of significant changes to your weight or anything not really. Luckily, as women, um, we're kind of made for endurance because our bodies are so intelligent. They, they tend to be able to preserve themselves really well, which for people trying to lose weight is awful. Unfortunately, it's just who we are. Um, How did you deal with the change of, uh, brought on from altitude sickness? Um, oh, I just, I mean, I did take some paracetamol and things. I just started to get a headache and just felt felt a little bit lethargic and um yeah. I don't know it feels it feels like the, the the air is just pressing on you and I know from his from having climbed some mount like Mont Blanc and some other mountains that I don't fare too well in altitude at all so yeah it wasn't it wasn't the best finish I remember getting there and going let's get out of here <laughs> <laughs> what effect did that have on your ability to navigate navigation was fine it was basically due south it was due south the whole way um and i had a gps with me and um yeah so it wasn't it wasn't intricate navigating at all it was it was pretty straightforward um have you ever hallucinated from altitude um from sleep deprivation yes i have um i've seen all sorts of sort of you know when i've been doing my adventure racing i've seen all sorts of monsters in the hedges and wow <laughs> That's crazy. You know, things that are not, definitely not there. So. <laughs> but no, I was okay in Antarctica, actually. 